Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Carves. Today I'll be doing a product review on high density urethane foam. I saw a post online from a carver asking about something that they could do that would help them. Uh, they said they had weak hands. Is there something I can do? Because I really like this hobby and I want to continue. So I thought, well, let's see what high density urethane foam is really about. So today in this review, I'm going to tell you what it's used for, what my carving experience was like, um, how it works as far as the paint and finish uh, that I used on this little gargoyle right here. And we'll go through the pros and cons and uh, we'll talk about the cost as well. So stick around, we'll get started. So high density urethane foam is used for a lot of different purposes. There are industrial purposes um, for say medical packaging, for example. Uh, a lot of this foam is used for what they call signboard. Many of the signs you see for businesses that have been routed and you can see they've been cut on CNC machines are actually made from high density urethane, not wood. Why is that? Well, because high density urethane doesn't rot. It doesn't warp it will last a very long time and it cuts easily so CNC machines can do uh, pretty quick work on a piece of urethane foam. It's also used by model makers and carvers in particular there are quite a few chip carvers that use high density urethane. So lots of different purposes and ways to use it. As far as my first impressions when I was carving with it, the touch of it I would say that it's similar to the feel of a, like an 800 grit sandpaper when, when you feel it for the first time. So that was one of my first impressions. As far as the smell, it's virtually odorless. Sunny couldn't even smell it. And believe me, if there was an odor, she would smell it. <laughs> and I thought, well, what's it sound like? Well. Similar to wood. So it's got a little bit different properties to it. It takes pencil marks very well. If you were going to trace a pattern or draw a pattern onto this foam with a pencil, yeah, it works very well. And it will be able to be cut. Uh, you can cut it with your bandsaw. You could cut it with a coping saw. And of course, your wood carving tools as well. So. Sonny and I thought, well, let's go ahead and check the density and compare density between a piece of Heineke basswood and the high density urethane foam. So both of these are the same volume uh, because they're both 2 by 2 by 12. And so we measured out the weight and Sonny, who's a certified math teacher, calculated out the density. Turns out that the density of this piece of Heineke basswood is 25 pounds per cubic foot. The urethane foam is 15 pounds per cubic foot. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that if you had a foot of this material, it would be 15 pounds. That's what it would weigh. And you would think, well, the dens density is also going to be somewhat characteristic of how easy it is to carve or more difficult it is to carve. I found that it was very similar to a piece of Heineke basswood in terms of the amount of pressure that I used to carve it. As far as my carving experience, I used the same knives, gouges, V-tool that I would use when I'm carving basswood or butternut or any other wood like cedar. So yeah, the same tools. And I checked my tools to see if there was any damage on the edge, if there were nicks on the blades. There wasn't. Um, somebody asked me, well, did you have to strop more often? Not really. I stropped the same frequency that I would strop if I were carving basswood. And can it be used for power carving? Yes. Um, I have seen people, I've seen videos of individuals who are using a Dremel or other rotary tool to power carve this material. I've even seen chainsaw carving uh, done with this material. So yes, it can be used for lots of um, different methods of carving. However, you would certainly want to wear a respirator or a mask and eye protection because this is synthetic material. It's, uh, it's certainly got some properties in it that may be harmful if you were to get it into your lungs or into your eyes for sure. 
One of the other things that I noticed too is when you carve this high density urethane with your knife, the material comes off in chips, very similar to the chips you get when you carve wood. One thing that was different though, uh, the chips seemed to have a static charge to them. So there were times where the chips would actually cling to the blade of my knife or, or to my gouge or what have you. And yes, um, Sonny's motioning to me. Yes, I did have a chip that clung to my face. Um, I also, I was able to achieve more depth than I would have with basswood. So for example, this little gargoyle, this is my first non-wood carving after 34 years of wood carving. And you'll see that there's, uh, you know, some depth next to the face on either side between the arms and the face. That goes way back in there. Uh, let me tell you. And I did it all with hand tools. There was no Dremel. That's something that I certainly wouldn't be able to do with wood. And structurally, I think this is actually stronger uh, than wood because of the lack of grain. Uh, you know, grain can be a, a problem with breakage, certainly. And so without that grain, I think there's, there's better structure there with the foam. It's also more lightweight. Makes it um, ideal for certain purposes like say Christmas ornaments or maybe a tree topper. Yeah, not having grain. Let's talk about that a little bit more. There are advantages and disadvantages to being uh, you know, a piece of material with no grain in it. Certainly if you're a new carver or someone just starting out, this might be an advantage for you to be able to learn to make certain cuts and achieve some success without dealing with wood grain. However, if you're going to be a wood carver, Sooner or later, you're going to have to understand wood grain, how it runs through a piece of wood, and each piece of wood is going to be different, how to work with end grain as well, and know what your limitations are with wood as compared to, say, a piece of high-density foam. So what about cost? I, you know, I can tell you that this piece of high-density foam, 2 by 2 by 12, it cost me $3.12. Whereas this piece of premium Heineke basswood, same volume, two by two by 12, it was $2.75. So yeah, that's a difference of 37 cents. This was a little more expensive, but I would say comparable in terms of cost. Some things that I learned about this, um, when I went to paint, this foam is impermeable to water. And so if you're a carver that likes to use a wash, most of us do, we want to water down some acrylic based paints that, I mean, water based paints and put that on the carving. Well, I started to do that and it rolled right off. Um, so what I had to do was pretty much use the paint at full strength. It was not watered down. And by doing that, the acrylic water based paint worked fine. Yeah. Uh, I also know that this particular foam will take other types of finishes. Uh, you could use house paint. You can use oil paints. You can also use things like tempura paints, milk paints, lots of different finishes and stains. Uh, in this case, after I painted this gargoyle, I used a combination of mineral spirits, and aged oak wood stain to antique it. And so, yes, it will take stains. It takes detail very well uh, also. So what about the environment? You might think, well, yeah, you know, if I can save a tree and, and not have to cut down trees to carve wood, maybe I'm helping the environment. A lot of people who do carve found wood are carving wood that's already been laying on the ground, right? We're not really killing a lot of trees to, to carve found wood. Basswood is, in many cases, grown specifically for carving. High density urethane is a synthetic material. Now, there are formulas that are being developed that are a little more eco-friendly, but for the most part, it's not going to rot. You heard me say that earlier. That means not biodegradable. That's a consideration, of course. And like I said, when you're working with it, uh, especially power carving in particular, be careful uh, to wear a respirator or a mask and some eye protection. 
So Sunny asked me, she said, well, would you buy it again? And I said, yeah, I would. One of the things that I believe that this could be used for, well, I've already mentioned, you can do a lot of different carvings with it, but in particular, there are carvers who will purchase some um, polymer clay or maybe epoxy resin clay, and they'll model a piece in the clay to have something to go by, a model to go by before they carve it into wood. And I believe that this foam could be used in a way that would be even more advantageous. I think that those same carvers might be able to carve that model into the foam. And by doing that, you're using the same tools and you're building the same muscle memory that you'll use when you go to carve it into wood. So pros and cons, folks. There are choices that we make every day. If you're interested in learning more about the product that I have here, um, I bought this from a fellow carver, Marty Leanouts. He's up in Minnesota. I'll put a link to the website in the description below the video. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.